Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. The time is 9-11 over on the East Coast and 6-11 on the West Coast. It looks like this briefing is now getting underway, so let's pop up that audio. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Israeli government spokesman Elon Levy. This is day 82 of the October 7th war. We'll start with the latest figures. Since Hamas declared war on Israel on October 7th, over 13,000 rockets have been fired at Israel. Of those, more than 2,000 have misfired and landed back in inside the Gaza Strip, causing untold damage to people and infrastructure there. IDF fatalities since the start of the October 7 massacre stand at 498. That's up by six since yesterday's update. The whole nation mourns the deaths of Staff Sergeant Ephraim Yachman, Staff Sergeant Itai Buton, Lieutenant Yaron Eliezer Chitis, Major Shai Shamriz, Master Sergeant Reserves Nitai Meisels, and Major Reserves Arya Rhine. An update on the hostage crisis. Time is running out for the 129 hostages in the Hamas terror dungeons since 10-7. In fact, time has already run out for the 22 of them Hamas has already murdered and is holding their bodies hostage. We continue to hear horrific testimonies from survivors, including of the enduring child abuse, both physical and psychological, that Hamas used against our children. Just yesterday, we revealed that Hamas had used the Indonesian hospital for the October 7th massacre with troops finding a hostage's car on the grounds of the hospital with the bloodstains of another hostage. The Red Cross must do more to secure access to those vulnerable hostages who have been buried alive in the terror dungeons. We remain committed to our pledge. There will be no one left behind and none of us are free until all of them are free. As we intensify efforts to protect civilians in Gaza, the State of Israel categorically rejects allegations by Hamas complicit UN official Paula Gaviria Bentakor, the special rapporteur on the human rights of IDPs, that Israel is somehow working to expel the civilian population of Gaza. Since before the ground offensive, Israel has designated the Al Muwasi area as a humanitarian zone and urged Gazan civilians to evacuate there temporarily for their safety. We want civilians to be protected in areas where Hamas is not already using them as human shields by hiding under their homes, schools, mosques, hospitals and UN facilities. And Hamas has done all of this under the noses of UN officials like Ms. Gaviria Bentakor, who are covering up for Hamas by falsely claiming that Israel is targeting hospitals, schools and shelters without credible evidence that Hamas has exploited them for military purposes. And they do that just to avoid admitting that Hamas built a huge terror infrastructure right under their facilities. It is horrific that UN agencies have endangered civilians in Gaza by funneling them into Hamas strongholds instead of facilitating their safe evacuation to the humanitarian zone. It is horrific that instead of helping civilians find safety, UN officials are attacking Israel's decision to designate a safe zone as a violation of international law. Honestly, it's beyond parody. We hold these agencies culpable for the loss of life as a result of this negligence, resisting our efforts to help civilians find safety inside the Gaza Strip. And it's horrific that UN agencies cannot bring themselves to condemn Hamas for shooting rockets at Israeli communities from out of the humanitarian zone. Civilians must be protected. They must be protected from Hamas. Ironically, the only people encouraging the mass displacement of Gazans right now are those who falsely label most of them refugees and indulge their dreams of relocating into sovereign Israeli territory through violent struggle instead of living in peace alongside us. We will not tolerate UN officials deflecting blame onto Israel to cover up the fact that they are covering up for Hamas. And we repeat our demand for global accountability, because when global institutions are hijacked in this way, these Hamas complicit officials let the whole world down. An update on the humanitarian aid deliveries to Gaza. As the UN appoints a new humanitarian aid facilitator, we wish to remind Mrs. Karg that Israel has excess, excess capacity to inspect aid trucks for possible Hamas weapon smuggling and places zero restrictions on the delivery of humanitarian necessities into Gaza. We remind her and her team that UN agencies are currently struggling to distribute aid at the pace that Israel is inspecting it. That's why yesterday the Kerem Shalom crossing was closed at the request of the United Nations, 
due to logistical constraints on the Gazan side of the crossing, and we hope that the UN will now do a better job of clearing that backlog. And of course, we expect Mrs. Karg's team to exercise maximum vigilance as the Hamas terror regime hijacks aid trucks, and we expect them to forcefully condemn Hamas when it does so, as has already been widely reported. The UN must have zero tolerance for terrorists hijacking aid from vulnerable civilians at the expense of international taxpayers. Unfortunately, to date, the UN aid mechanism in Gaza has been woefully unsuccessful because it goes through UNRWA. Aid simply isn't reaching the people who need it because Hamas hijacks it and UNRWA covers up for it. Just moments ago, the IDF released a recording of a phone call between an IDF officer and a resident in Gaza who explains how Hamas controls the distribution of aid inside the Gaza Strip through UNRWA, a UN agency, and I quote, The situation is terrible, says the man, because the humanitarian people, the people responsible for the humanitarian aid, are thieves. He goes on, Hamas has its hands on UNRWA administration workers, and it manages UNRWA. They are those in charge of the agency, and those in charge of everywhere else. The man continues complaining to the officer who calls him. Those in charge of the departments or the regional headquarters of the agency are Hamas operatives themselves. Those are his words, not mine, and it's a damning indictment. We urge the new UN facilitator to focus on efforts that will work to alleviate the humanitarian suffering that Hamas is trying to orchestrate instead of flushing international taxpayer funds down the toilet and straight into Hamas's terror tunnels. Regarding the timeline for this war, we repeat that the only clock that matters is that every second Hamas is still standing after the October 7th massacre, it is a ticking time bomb. Yesterday, the chief of staff of the IDF, Lieutenant General Herzi Halevi, stated his assessment that this war will continue for many more months in light of the unique counter-terrorism challenge the IDF faces of combating an army of terror that has spent 16 years deliberately embedding itself in civilian areas. As Lieutenant General Halevi said, there are no magic solutions and there are no shortcuts in the thorough dismantling of Hamas. An update on the Northern Front. Despite our severe warnings, Hezbollah continues its unprovoked aggression against Israeli territory. We are now at a fork in the road. Either Hezbollah backs off from the Israeli border in line with UN Resolution 1701 from 2006, or we will push it away ourselves. Hezbollah and its Iranian warlord patrons are dragging Lebanon into a totally unnecessary war, into the war that Hamas started. Our region does not deserve a broader war, and we call for an effective diplomatic solution to stop Hezbollah's systematic violations of UN Security Council Resolution 1701, or else we will have to repel this threat ourselves, this threat to Israel, to Lebanon, and to the entire Middle East, and we are preparing for all scenarios. As Defence Minister Yoav Gallant said yesterday, anyone who acts against us is a potential target, and there will be there will be no immunity for anyone guilty of aggression against our people. That's the end of today's update. As always, we'll take your questions now. Thank you. The first question comes from Arye O'Sullivan of Khan English News. The Palestinians are reporting that Israel is returning bodies to Gaza. What is the policy now regarding this? Who are these bodies? Terrorists, civilians? Will this continue and expand? Uh, Ario, I can give you this quote that you can attribute to an IDF spokesman. Uh, During the war, bodies have been transported to Israel for an identification procedure as part of our effort to locate the hostages and the missing persons. The difficulties in identifying those murdered make it necessary to transfer the bodies to Israel for forensic identification. The process of examining the bodies coming from the Gaza Strip is a routine analysis that complies with internationally accepted forensic standards, ruling out their identification as Israeli hostages abducted on October 7th. Israel is careful to respect the integrity of the personal bodies of the dead. You can attribute that to an IDS spokesperson. Thank you. The next question is from Joel Pollack of Breitbart News. Does Israel wish to see UNRWA removed or dismantled from Gaza and other areas? Joel, I'll refer you to the statement from the foreign minister two days ago, uh, instructing our mission at the United Nations to object to further funding uh, for UNRWA, and the foreign minister's statement there speaks for itself. Okay, that's all uh, we have time for. We'll update you on the timing of tomorrow's briefing. Thank you very much, everyone, and keep safe. Thank you.